everybody, it's Cheyenne and welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to do another dental assisting video for you guys. I actually got a lot more views on my last um, dental assisting video that I did than I thought I would. I always thought my job was kind of boring and no one really wanted to know about it. But the more I thought about it, my job is actually a lot of fun and I really do enjoy my job. And if I can help anyone that wants to get into the dental assisting field or that has any questions, I would love to do that. So today I wanted to do a video about the basics of dental assisting. Now this is basically what you would learn on probably your first week of school. And this is the very bare minimum like basics when you get into dental assisting um, and what you need to know. So I do have a little model here and <laughs> this model is actually missing a tooth so we will just pretend that it is there. But the first thing you will learn in class that you may or may not already know is that a full grown adult has 32 teeth, okay? And that is counting the wisdom teeth. Now, a child will have 20 baby teeth when they get all of their baby teeth. You will only have 20. And then as you your mouth gets larger and you get older, then you start growing the molars and eventually full grown, you will have 32 teeth. Now, numbering of teeth is a little more difficult. Um, now, this is very confusing when you first start learning this. It took me a long time to just look at a tooth and know what number it is or know what surface I'm looking at. But basically, when you start counting teeth, you want to look at the mouth like you're looking into your patient's mouth. That is how you're going to determine. So my left is actually the patient's right side, if that makes sense. And then my right is actually the patient's left side. It is like you're looking into the mouth. So if this model, it's like I'm looking into the mouth like this. So this over here is number one. So basically your upper right is where we're gonna start. Now your first wisdom tooth on the upper right is number one, okay? And then it goes to number two, number three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So your upper mouth has tooth number one through 16, okay? And then you, when you drop down, so right below number 16 is number 17. And then it goes 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. Okay, so upper right, patient's upper right, is number one. One through 16 on the upper arch, and then 17 through 32 on the lower arch. Now, so it's number one on the upper right, and number 32 on the lower right. And then over on your left side, upper left is number 16, lower left is number 17, now the easiest way I can remember all these numbers is if you remember what the front teeth are. So your front teeth are always eight and nine. And then your lower front teeth are 24 and 25. So if you can remember that these two front teeth here are eight and nine, and these are 24, 25, it will definitely help with your numbering. Now for children, I can do another video because children are actually not numbers, they are letters. And <laughs> even now after six years of dental assisting, when I look into like a child's mouth that has adult teeth and like um, baby teeth, I'm like, what the heck tooth is that? You learn the basics, but it's a little bit more difficult. But right now we're just gonna stick to the adult teeth. So again, adult mouth has 32 teeth, one through 16, 17 through 32. Now, when you get into assisting, and you start placing fillings or noting decay, you have to learn the surfaces of the teeth. Now this can be a little tricky, but we're gonna go through this, okay? So surfaces of a tooth. So let's say somebody has decay on number eight and it's the facial part of the tooth, okay? 
So you want to find number eight, which is your front tooth right here, number eight. So facial means the front of the tooth. So that is the part that you see when you smile. Okay, that's your facial. Now, the back side of the tooth, the back side back here, is what we call lingual. Now that is the tongue side of the tooth. That's the easiest way to remember it. So facial is what you see when you smile, and then lingual is the tongue side. It is the side that your tongue rests up against or will hit. Lingual is tongue side. Now, the mesial part of the tooth is the middle of the front part. So let me explain this, okay? So when you start labeling teeth, you'll learn that there's four quads in the, in the adult mouth, okay? Quad one is number one through number eight. Quad two is nine through number 16. Quad three is 17 through 24. Quad four is 25 through 32, okay? So you, when you smile, you have your midline, right? That is in between eight and nine. So that's why that's a separate quad. So number eight, the mesial of number eight is actually this part of the tooth right here, the part that's in between eight and nine. But when you go over to this side of the tooth, the mesial is this way. So number nine mesial is in between eight and nine, right? Now, so the mesial is the front part of the tooth in the middle. Now you have the distal part of the tooth. The distal is the back part of the tooth. So it gets a little tricky because it's not behind the tooth, it's the back part. So number eight distal, so this is number eight, it's this spot right here in between seven and eight is the distal of number eight, okay? So again, facial is the part that shows when you are smiling, facial front of the tooth. Lingual is behind the tooth. It's where your tongue hits. So that is the back of the tooth. Mesial is in between the front part of the tooth. In front meaning going towards the midline, okay? Distal is in between the back part of the tooth. All right, I hope it's all making sense. Um, and there's another surface of the tooth. There's the occlusal surface of the tooth. Now the occlusal surface of the tooth is right here on, on top of the tooth, like this part, the biting surface of the tooth, okay? So yes, the occlusal is the biting surface of the tooth. It's this part right here on the tooth. It's where all your food gets stuck in there, jam-packed in there, the part that you use for chewing. So in the next part of the video, I actually opened up some basic cassettes for you guys that you will be setting up during procedures. I just did an extraction cassette and then um, a filling cassette. And I showed the instruments that you will use during the procedures. And I'm going to explain what those instruments do and just a basic setup of those procedures. All right, this is the extraction cassette. This is the bite block. This is a mouth prop that will help keep the patient's mouth open during procedures. That is a needle protector. And then that is the syringe. It just helps you from getting poked from the needle. This is something that the doctor will use to help keep the cheek or tongue away from the extraction site. That is a mouth mirror. That is in all cassettes for the dentist. This is a curette. This will be used after the extraction to clean out the socket of any tissue or infection or debris. This is a periostal. This helps the doctor get the tissue away from the tooth for easier extraction. Now this is a small luxator. This is the flathead screwdriver tool that I had talked about earlier in um, the video and that was the large. Cotton pliers, this is in every cassette for the dentist. 
they'll be used to pick up cotton rolls or other things, gauze. All right, and that's it for the basic setup for an extraction cassette besides the forceps that the doctor will get out accordingly. Now this is the filling cassette. Again, the needle protector so you don't poke yourself with the syringe. And then the syringe. This is two different um, bite blocks. The yellow one's a little bit smaller for people that have smaller mouths. They also have pedo ones for children. This is a mouth mirror again. This is an explorer. This is in all cassettes as well. Cotton pliers. This is to hold um, the bite registration paper. I'm gonna be showing you here. There's blue paper that a patient will bite on when the filling is complete so we can check the bite. And the blue paper will show up on the high spots of the tooth or the filling so we can adjust. This is what is used to gather up the amalgam. Oops, I dropped it. <laughs> and then of course this is used for the um, metal fillings. And this is an amalgam well. That is where you gather the amalgam once it is mixed. This is the condenser. One end is smaller than the other. This is what the dentist will use to condense or push the amalgam into the filling or into the hole of the tooth. This is called an egg burnisher. He again will use this to pack or to remove any excess amalgam or smooth the amalgam into the filling. This is a carver, this is a large carver. This again will be used to scrape the amalgam filling or remove any excess filling away from the tooth before it dries or sets up. This is a small carver or a discoid is what it's called. This is for a composite filling or a tooth colored filling. And this is too, this is a ball burnisher. Some dentists will use this um, on amalgam fillings. Some will use it on composite fillings. It's just a burnisher. This is a matrix. This is what is used for an amalgam filling. You put that band around the tooth so you can shape the filling. And again, that is it for a basic filling setup. Besides all the things that you would use, like the composite, the adhesive, the etch, the amalgam. Now I'm gonna show you how to set up a syringe. This is a short needle, the blue one is. The yellow is a long needle. The short needle will be used to get areas of the mouth numb, usually on the upper or interior. The long needle is to do a block injection and that requires to go a little bit deeper. So this is the long needle that I am putting on right now. You twist it in. And that is the protectant, so you don't get poked by the needle. And then you always wanna make sure it's engaged, so you always tap the end. Little squirt squirt. <laughs> And you see how that protects your fingers from getting poked? Like so. And I'm just demonstrating how you would hand it to the dentist. You would hold the, hold the end like so, and he would take, I'm gonna show you with my hand how he would take it. He would take it out like that. And that is to prevent anyone from getting poked. All right, and that's it. All right guys, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, this is like the basic 
first day of school of dental assisting. Um, if you would like any more of these videos or have any suggestions of things you would like to learn, please leave some comments down below. I'm going to kind of pick and choose some videos that I would have found helpful when I was in school. And this is something that I definitely would have found helpful because the surfaces and the teeth numbers really confused me at first. But if you have any questions or have any video suggestions, please leave them down below. And don't forget to subscribe. And thanks for watching. I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you. Bye.